Okay, technical math final review. Okay, perform the indicated operations around to two decimal places as needed. Now, whenever you have a division line, if you have operations on top, you need to put that whole thing in parentheses. Bottom doesn't need it. There's no operations, just a 21. Then I go parentheses, and then exponents, roots, multiply, divide, add, subtract. So the parentheses, okay? So in the parentheses, you got 21 minus 7, okay? You have an inner and an outer. If you simplify the inner, that's 14. So now we still got 21. We have the outer parentheses with a 6 times 14. So now I get rid of my other parentheses, okay? There's just one operation. 6 times 14 is 84. So I have 84 divided by 21. And then the only operation left after the parentheses are gone is to divide. So that one's 4. Okay, number two, you need to insert a parentheses there, not there. It's just one. That's just one value. Okay, so we got to simplify our parentheses. Now you have two operations, but it's adding and subtracting. That's the same step. Okay, so you just go forward with it and do them at the same time. Eighty-three plus sixteen is ninety-nine minus fifty-one is forty-eight, and the other one just has the one operation of thirteen plus five, and that's eighteen. So you have 47 minus 48 divided by 8 plus 18. Okay, so the parentheses are gone. There's no exponents, no roots. You got multiply. Yeah, you have division right there. 48 divided by 8 is 6. So you have 47 minus 6 plus 18. Minus and plus, that's done on the same step. Okay, so at the same time, 41 plus 18 is 59. So when I say do it at the same time, that means just go straight forward. Okay, determine the number of board feet in the piece of lumber using the formula. Board feet is thickness in inches times width in inches times the length in feet divided by 12. Okay. Really, you're just inserting these numbers in here. The double quotations are inches. The length is feet. You don't need to make any conversions here. Okay, Just because two are inches, one's feet, they don't all need to be the same thing. Because the formula is inches, inches, feet, which is exactly what we have. Inches, inches, feet. So I have everything I need. So board feet. T, that would be three. It doesn't even matter the order you put them because it's just multiplying. And then width is 10, and then the length is 15, then 12. Okay, so what do I need to do? Well, probably need to put a parentheses there and figure that out. It's just all multiplication, so I multiply straight through, and I get 450. So the board feet is equal to 450 divided by 12, and that's 37.5. board feet. Okay, next problem, more order of operations. Just look at that thing. 7 1 8 times the quantity 6 and 7 8 minus 4 and 3 16 divided by 4 and 3 4. So you need to, in, even though there's a parentheses already there, you need to insert it around the entire top because you have a bunch of operations there. Okay, and I'm going to collect my list. Parentheses, you got to do the inner first, and that's going to be 2 and 11 over 16. I'm just, I got them calculated just to speed things along. So we got the division, 4 and 3 quarters, and on top we still have the outer parentheses with 7 and 1 eighth times 2 and 11 over 16. We still have the outer parentheses, just a times operation. Now you times them, and you get a pretty big answer. You get 19 and 19 over 128, okay? Now the parentheses are gone, and I have 19 and 19 over 128 over 4 and 3 quarters, okay? Now, no exponents, no roots, multiply, divide, so we just divide, okay? 
4 and 1 over 32 is what that equals. Okay, one step at a time. Number 5, 10 and 9 tenths times the brace 15 and 7 16 times the parentheses 2 thirds plus 5 6 minus 3 and 3 tenths divided by 2 and a half. A brace is a parentheses, but you got to do the inner first. Two thirds plus five sixths. That's one and one half. So now I have ten and nine over ten times the brace. Fifteen and seven over sixteen times one and one half minus three and three tenths divided by two and one half. Now remember that brace is a parentheses. Okay. It most definitely is a parenthesis. Okay, you have two operations, a times and a minus. I'm going to do the times first because multiplication comes before subtraction. So I times that and I get 23 and 5 over 32. 23 and 5 over 32. I'm going to double check that. Yep, and then I do the subtraction, okay, 23 and 5, 32, minus 3 and 3 tenths. When I do that, I get this huge answer. I get 19 and 137 over 160. See you, Mr. Brace. It's been nice knowing you. So you got 10 and 9 tenths times 19 and 137 over 160 divided by 2 and 1 half. So the parentheses are gone. No exponents, no roots or radicals. Multiply, divide. We have multiply and divide, but if it's on the same step, I just go straight forward and I'm ready to calculate my answer. Now, I actually get a decimal because it's such a huge denominator. The calculator doesn't pick it up, so I'm fine with you going 86.57. Okay, you can have a decimal. Okay, number six, R1, R2, and R3 are individual resistances in ohms for the circuit. Determine the total resistance, which is RT, in ohms for the circuit shown using the formula. So RT. So R1. R1 is going to be 120 plus R2 times R3 on top of this fraction line. So it's going to be 50 times 85. Then R2 plus R3, so 50 plus 85. Insert your parentheses. In each parentheses, you have just the one operation. So 50 times 85 is 4,250, and then 50 plus 85 is 135. Parentheses are gone. So you don't have any exponents or roots, multiply, divide, yeah, yeah, plus and divide. you got to figure out the division. Okay, I divide that, I round it, I'm going to have to round it. It's 31.48. Okay, so RT equals 120 plus 31.48, and we have our answer when we add. It's going to be 151.48, and that's going to be ohms. Okay, express each of the following fractions as decimals. Two places of need, it's easy. You make a decimal point. You don't have a whole number in front, zero. 33 divided by 64. Zero point, it's going to be 52. Okay, this decimal will have a 4 in front of it, and I divide 8 by 15. 5.3. Two decimal places. Expressed as reduced fractions, that's what a fraction looks like. If you took the zero and the decimal out, you'd have the number 58. Now, look after the decimal. That is the tens the tenths place. I put a little ten there. That's the one hundred hundredths place, and this is the thousandths place. There's no such thing as a once place after the decimal. Ten, a hundred, thousand. So it goes over a thousand. 
Then you can either reduce it the old fashioned way, you'd start dividing by two, probably because they're both even. Or you can ABC it, it's 29 over 500, but all you could do is divide it by two, 29, 500. This has to be reduced. Okay, number 10, 0 0.00625. So taking out the zeros in the decimal, you get 625. So that's the tens, tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, the ten thousandths, and then we end up in the hundred thousandths place. Okay, you can reduce it the old-fashioned way. This one would be a pain because it would divide over and over by the same factor, which would be 5, so it's 1 over 160. So the greatest common factor must have been 625. Okay. Okay, perform the indicated operations around two decimal places. 8.18 divided by the square root. I put the 2 if it's a square. 2.85 minus 1.06. Okay, so parentheses, we do not have any. No, you don't need to insert a parentheses there. Exponents, okay. Actually, why don't you? Parentheses, if you have an operation inside of a radical, you're going to want to put that in parentheses and figure that out, okay. So 2.85 minus 1.06 is 1.78. Okay, so we have 8.18 divided by the square root, 1.78. Okay, e yeah, exponent is like a root, so you need to simplify this root right there. So I got 2 second caret, 1.78. I got 1.33. So then you take 8.18 divided by 1.33. Six point, and I got six point one five. Okay, at least I think I did that right. Okay, I'm off by a little bit. It's one point seven nine. I got, I'm off a little bit. Don't worry about it. Okay, I mis subtracted that be 1.79 which ends up with a slightly different answer so if you got different than I did don't worry about it okay number 12 well yeah parentheses now you don't see any but there are several you have the whole thing inside the root then you also have a fraction line so you got inner parentheses as well so let's simplify them okay so my inner parentheses are 8.63 times 5.1 figure out what that is. 44.01. Now bottom we also have an inner parentheses. Remember the outer parentheses is the whole thing under, underneath the root. Okay. Now you have two operations, a second power and a minus, but that's so easy to do on a calculator if you just go second minus 0 0.59, 41.66. So my inners are simplified. Now, you still have the whole thing underneath the root to get rid of, okay? So now you divide that. Okay, 1.06, okay? So my parentheses is gone. So basically all I need to do is evaluate the cube root of 1.06. Remember I do a cube root. You go 3 second caret, not the x squared. 1.06. 1.02. So again, parentheses. If you have a bunch of crap operations in a root, put parentheses. If you have a fraction, put parentheses. If you have to go in or out, or that's fine too. Okay, express each ratio in reduced fraction form. Now, this is the one where you can't do the ABC. 
you put 35 over 10, but you need a top and a bottom. So you go to a multiplication table and find 5 and 35 and 10 in the furthest row down. It'd be in the fifth row. 35 and 10. So you divide by 5 because they're in the fifth row, and 7 over 2. If you ABC, it's screwed up because it's 3 and 1 half. That's not a ratio. A ratio is a top and a bottom. 52 and over 16. Do the same thing. They're not in the 16th row. They're not in the 8th row. 16 and 52 are in the 4th row. So it's going to be 13 over 4. Okay, cross multiply and divide that sucker. 6.2 times 9.8 divided by 21.7, 2.8. Okay, number 16. The machine bolt shown has a thread pitch of 132nd of an inch. Okay, see these little things? These are your pitches. Okay. Every, every thread then has a pitch, that means a spit. The pitch is a distance between two adjacent threads or the thickness of one thread. Find the number of threads in two and three quarters of an inch. So you have your whole amount as two and three quarters, okay? Then what you need to do is you need to find the space between the threads, okay? Well, that's just dividing, okay? Divide by 1 over 32. My camera's about to die. The answer is 88 threads. I need to make a new one. Okay. 